continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, sorry. Um, so this is my Christmas message. This is my Christmas video, and I was just um, preparing for Christmas, my favorite holiday. And, um, you know, like many people, I'm going to be spending my time all alone. And, but unlike many people, I'm going to be perfecting my eternal life strategy. I'm going to be thinking about how I can live forever by studying health and um, things like that. Probably perfecting my hot chocolate recipe. Okay? <sighs> hot chocolate. You know, no Christmas would be complete without hot chocolate. Cheers to eternal life. Okay? Um, I think about a lot of things during Christmas time. Okay, a lot of things come to my mind. I just, I start to think about my family, my friends, you know, who are my true friends? Who are my true family? And, you know, I don't think, true to me, true family is, is not tied together by blood or race. Okay? True family is bound together by ideas and actions, how we act. You know, that's how I'm going to judge you is you by your actions if you're my true family or not if you're my true friend it's not about your race or any of this stuff or your gender so you know my true family for instance are the people who will help me live forever yes they will encourage me on my path to eternal life those are my those are I consider my true family and uh my true family acts wisely Okay, and they fear the hypothetical God. Okay, like I was just reading Philippians 2.12, my favorite Bible verse. You caught me. <laughs> you caught me reading my favorite Bible verse. I love that verse because it's about fearing the hypothetical God. You know, living forever is, of course, my primary goal in life. You know, uh, a smart person, that would be their primary goal is living forever, okay? And we must not give up, okay? We must not surrender to death. Um, and we must continue to keep on fighting to cure aging. You know, the greatest crisis that we as human beings face, aging and death, that is our crisis. And that's what we need to be thinking about this Christmas. All the people around the world who are dying of aging and diseases, these things can be cured. And uh, we must remember that life isn't meaningless, okay? Life is only meaningless if we die and cease to exist. So we must not get caught up in this nihilistic thinking, you know, nihilism is for deathists. But, but we have a real chance of living forever. And as long as we have a real chance of living forever, then it doesn't make sense to be a nihilist. Think about it. There's so much meaning to be had in this world. Because we can live forever. We can think to the future and we can go, I might live forever. And that gives my life meaning. And you know, when I feel that I've lost my guidance or purpose in life, um, I tend to look back on some of the old childhood movies. Okay? Movies that shaped who I am today. The Grinch. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. One of the best movies ever made. Um, and I love that movie. The Grinch. What a great character. Cindy Lou Who. Okay? These are characters that enrich us. That inspire us. Because that movie, The, the Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, it taught us a message not to judge a book by its cover, okay? Because the Grinch, all right, he's this ugly green monster, and Cindy Lou Who, she loves him anyways. She can look past his green appearance, and, you know, he, he wasn't even of the same species, but she still accepted him and, 
and loved him just just like she was uh, just like he was one of her own right just like he was a, a who but he's not a who it doesn't matter to her and that is the message of this Christmas it's like stop judging by a a, a book by its cover look deeper inside who what does this person truly represent with their actions how they're living are they a good person are they a bad person? That's the true Christmas spirit. And let's not forget the great message of consumerism, of the anti-consumerist message in The Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. That Christmas isn't about your material possessions. Life isn't about your material possessions. Of course they are. That's what it's all about, isn't it? That's what it's always been about. Gifts. Gifts. Gifts, 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 gifts. You want to know what happens to your gifts? They all come to me. In your garbage. You see what I'm saying? In your garbage! Because at the end of the day, your material possessions, your cars, and all this stuff, it's all gonna end up in the garbage heap, okay? The garbage heap. It's going to the, the landfill. And the important thing is that we don't end up in the landfill. You know what I'm saying? We don't end up in the garbage heap, in the cemetery. That's where we gotta be thinking about how to avoid the cemetery, how to avoid death. And let's not forget the greatest attribute of the Grinch. The Grinch wasn't all bad. He was a very judgmental... He was a judgmental Grinch. He was filled with hatred. He was always counting the people he hated and, and looking at the, upon the people he hated and judging them. And that's a good thing too. We need to be... I mean, Christmas isn't all about love and, you know, peace and stuff. It's about judging people who deserve to be judged. I encourage everyone out there to be judgmental this Christmas. Be judgmental all the time. And hate the people that deserve to be hated. I hate you. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate, hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. You know, and you might ask, well, who do you hate? Huh? Who do you hate? I'll tell you who I hate. And here's just one example. There's so many people I, I hate. But... I hate Winston Churchill, okay? Yeah, Winston Churchill. He ordered the bombing of, of uh, Dresden in Germany, you know, World War II, and, you know, he killed, he ordered basically to have thousands of innocent civilians murdered, you know, in this bombing, this fire bombing and everything. That is evil. And that's the kind of people I hate. And you know what? Winston Churchill. You know, that guy clearly did not fear God. That's what I'm talking about. Fearing God. Because if you feared the hypothetical God, you wouldn't go around ordering the murder of innocent ch uh, people. Innocent children, women, guys, everything. And he just... And how could you even think about honoring someone like Winston Churchill? You know? <laughs> Ridiculous. And people do. They honor him and they tribute to him. And they quote him as if he's some hero. It makes me sick to my stomach. Okay? You know, if there is a God, okay, and I like to refer to God as the hypothetical God, because of course, no one knows if God exists or if he doesn't exist or anything like that. But if there is a God, okay, God might be a lot like Santa Claus. Santa Claus, okay? He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. The hypothetical God is going to judge you and me and everyone, maybe. That's what I'm saying here. That's the message. Are you preparing for the judgment of the hypothetical God? Are you reading the Bible? which might be the hypothetical rules of the hypothetical God. Who knows? It's a guess.
You know, when I look around this world, I don't see many people that are fearing the hypothetical God. No. I see fearless people. And they should fear the hypothetical God because they might be judged. <sighs> they might be judged. Everything they're doing, they're thinking they're doing it in secret. They're thinking no one's watching them. Well, the hypothetical God might be watching them and ultimately might judge them. So this message of this Christmas is keep your mind open to all the possibilities in life. All the possibilities. That includes the possibility of living forever. And that includes the possibility of the hypothetical God. Okay? Yes. All the possibilities. Don't be one of these closed-minded, arrogant people thinking you know it all. You don't know it all. The truth might be stranger than fiction, people. Take the red pill. Take the green pill. Never the blue pill, you know? And do remember to judge people. And, you know, don't leave all the judgment to the hypothetical God, right? Don't let him be the one judging it only. You have to judge people too. You know, take it into your own hands. Because after all, the hypothetical God might not even exist. So we need to execute judgment on the world and decide who is deserving of eternal life, who is not deserving. Who is the bad people? Who's the good people? We need to take that upon ourselves. It's because we can't count on a hypothetical God to execute perfect wrath and justice in this world. As much as I would like that to be the case, we can't count on it. And we cannot count on the hypothetical God to give us our eternal life. So that is the message this Christmas. Merry Christmas. May you live forever, and may you, may you uh, be judged righteously by the hypothetical God. May you pass the test, if this life was a test. You know, you never know, people. You never know.